Hey guys, Coach Pete here from Alliance Martial Arts. Today we're going to be looking at solo training for trapping, developing your chi sao using two different training devices that you're going to find complementary, the hoop and the ball. The hoop is going to help train your exterior power lines and the ball is going to help with the interior power lines. Put together, this is a one-two punch to help you learn the three most important techniques of Wing Chun. Now, when I say that, the three most important techniques of Wing Chun, what is it that you imagine? Are you imagining punching, kicking, using the elbows? It's really nothing so dramatic, nothing so dynamic. When you read the Kyun Kyuit, the martial poems that teach us the fighting theory and the application of the art, they say that the three treasures, or sometimes they say the three terrors of Wing Chun are the Tan Sao, the Bong Sao, and the Fuk Sao. And so these training devices are going to help us to develop those solo. And I think these are something that are excellent no matter what your level, whether beginner or advanced, you're going to be able to get something out of using these. So let's start off with the hoop. Now the hoop is more commonly seen in uh, Kung Fu training and you'll see different sizes of hoops. Some of them are small like this or even smaller and some get quite large. If you're trying to do the exercise I'm sharing here today with a really big hoop, your, your hands are going to be out way too wide and it's not going to do what you need it to do. Now to learn to use the different size of hoops for trapping, the best resource I can recommend is Master at Arms, James A. Keating's DVD, Iron and Rattan Hoop, Volume 3 of the Trapping Series. And you can find that at his website, jamesakeating.com, or at my website, alliancemartialarts.com. In either case, we're using this small hoop today. This is more like uh, sticking hands with someone who has a good level of skill where it's a tighter line of energy. So let's start off. This is how I would begin a new student, is have them put this around their arms like this and say, put your hands, palm up, put your thumbs to the outside, keep your elbows in. You notice how that puts your forearms parallel? Good. Not like this, but like this. The arms are forward at a nice open angle. Great, great. And we'll just call this position one for right now. And the reason I use that, I don't tell them that this is the Tan Sao, because I don't want them getting confused by a foreign language that neither of us speaks. Okay, I don't want to make this a memory contest where they're fighting against a foreign language. I want them to learn the techniques of fighting. Now later we can get into that. But for right now, let's just say position one. And I'll ask them, okay, great. Now take your hand, either one is fine. And I want you to turn it over so it's palm down and keep those fingers facing towards the front. Like they're little fire hoses. Great, there we go. And now come back to position one. And now go up to that position two. You notice how your elbow is right in front of your shoulder? Your hands are open and relaxed. There we go, just like that. Position one, position two. And then they can pick up the pace a little bit, okay? And this is how you're gonna start them. And you notice by using this, I'm pushing outward on the hoop. My elbow's in front of my shoulder, my hands are facing forward. I'm in a decent position with both hands. And so position one, position two, or of course, as you know them, the tonsil and the bong sao. Now, let's take a look at that same exercise developing the internal power line with the ball. So again, we're going to start off. This time, you're putting the ball between your forearms. You notice again, this keeps your forearms parallel and keeps your hands in that good position one. If the elbows start to sneak out, what's going to happen? The ball is naturally going to drop. So this is a governor on your motion. Now from there, you're going to start to go position one, position two, position one, position two, allowing the ball to stay between your arms. You're not using your hands, okay? You're using the forearms, developing the internal pressure, keeping the hands loose and relaxed because that's going to maximize your hand sensitivity. If you tense your hands up like little swords, you lose the feeling in them. So that is using the ball, again, squeezing in and developing your position, again, is the elbow in front of the shoulder? Is it up here? Is it down here? Is it out here? Where's your other hand? Is it in the good palm up position? Is the elbow open? These are all the things that this is going to be developing right from the beginning 
with a new student. Now, as we're doing that drill and we're rolling the ball between the forearms, we're developing our interior line of power, which is going to help us with what? Technique number three, or the foot sal, position three. I say again, just don't confuse your student. Okay, and so this is how you would train that. Here I'm going to have the bottom hand will be palm in, the top hand will be palm down. Again, this is just an easy way to help them start to learn the feeling. What does it feel like to do this exercise with a partner? You're rolling on the wrists, you're not using your hands, okay? So you're keeping your hands open. Use these training devices. This is going to help us set as a governing principle to make sure that your movement is correct and help you develop the sensitivity. And if you do this for dedicated rounds, two or three minutes, you're going to feel a burn exactly like if you were doing this with a partner. And you're developing your triceps, your lats, your delts, everything else. So, until next time, I'm Pete Couts, Director of Alliance Martial Arts. I hope this was helpful to you guys. Get out to the gym and get training.